Well, good afternoon. Uh, my project I've got going now is to uh, get a lithium battery pack installed in my area right there. Uh, what I had before was just a hand-me-down car battery that uh, my brother, uh, my excuse me, my son gave me, and uh, it's woefully inadequate. And on the trip to Big Bend, uh, we had to charge it up every day because uh, I was afraid I was going to run it down. But anyways, I've since removed the battery, and uh, of course I've got the the doors off and these shelves uh, I made so they can pop in and out so I can work back there. But anyways, uh, I'm just going to show you right now the area that I'm working with. It's basically about 18 high, uh, 12 inches deep, and about 15 inches wide. So let's go in the uh, garage in the workshop and I'll show you what I got going. So in the workshop here, what I've done is I've ordered some lithium batteries uh, from China. And uh, let's get a close-up and I'll show you exactly what I've got. So what we have here is... Uh, four 3.2 volt cells, 380 amp hours. So when we put the four cells together, what we'll end up with is a nominal 12 volt battery pack. So what I'm doing right now is I'm uh, building a box that the uh, batteries will be mounted in and I'll be able to put, put them in and take them out of the trailer as need be. Uh, I will be, uh, this battery box will have some extra items on it. It'll end up having some USB ports and some different things on it. So, uh, but right now I'm just making a basic uh, holder. Each battery will uh, have a piece of rubber between each of the batteries. These, these batteries are made out of aluminum shells, so there'll be a, a, a piece of rubber uh, where all the surfaces are at. There'll be some uh, styrofoam here on the bottom and between each battery there'll be a, a rubber sheet. Okay we're making a little bit of progress here. I've got the basic um, pieces of wood cut. Right now what I'm doing is I've uh, cut out some circles here and I'm going to take my jigsaw and cut that out and that'll be where the handles are at. So that's my next step. Here we have the semi-completed uh, battery box. Uh, I've used threaded rod uh, to place a small amount of compression on the batteries, which uh, supposedly enhances the lifespan of the batteries. And uh, I have some thin plywood up on top where I'll be placing the uh, BMS, that's the battery management system. Uh, the threaded rod uh, is I covered in uh, PEX material to keep from rubbing on the uh, battery shells. Here is a view of the BMS, the battery management system. I chose the Overkill Solar BMS, which includes a Bluetooth communication module, 120 amp continuous charge or discharge current, has a low temperature charging cutoff, and a fully programmable Android app. I've placed another piece of plywood uh, to cover the BMS to protect it from any falling objects and also to provide a little shelf right there. Here's the uh, BMS completely hooked up. Uh, the little Bluetooth module there on top on the left uh, with the blue light uh, has an outstanding range. Uh, I can uh, get uh, uh, data, data from this battery about 40 feet across my driveway at the house. On the left there you can see that I have a, a negative uh, post that I can make my connections to and also uh, below that is a 60 amp Anderson connector where I can put out uh, power to uh, run uh, any 12 volt device. Uh, the small box there on the right hand side is a Hewitt Packard server power supply that I bought off of eBay that's been repurposed and uh, I'll show you the build on that uh, next. Hey folks, uh, what I have here is a repurposed um, power supply. It's a Hewitt Packard power supply. I've already uh, disassembled this and went in and disabled the uh, over voltage protection uh, circuit on it that wouldn't let me get past uh, about 12 and a half volts and I needed to get up to 14 volts uh, at least uh, to charge my lithium battery. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build an enclosure for this. Also I'm going to put a uh, on and off switch Right here, this, uh, this tab here and the one behind it on the other side is short-circuited. 
and that's what turns the unit on. If that loop wasn't there, it's a sh shunt basically. If that wasn't there, the, the unit would not power on. So if I'm gonna uh, rework this and put a toggle switch in so I can turn the unit on, on and off. Also, this variable resistor here is awful small and you have to use a screwdriver. I bought a lot larger one that I can put a knob on and I'm gonna, once I build the enclosure case, I'm gonna put that knob on there where I can adjust the, uh, the voltage. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Here's the uh, completed power unit. Uh, we're looking at the, uh, the rear of the power unit right now. Uh, up top, I have a knob where I can adjust the output voltage. And the, uh, the yellow connector there on the right is the uh, power outlet uh, Anderson connector. Here you can see the, uh, the two fans for cooling. I have a toggle switch mounted to the right there. Um, and at the top is a potentiometer, which was a, a variable resistor uh, with a knob on it. Uh, the 2000K uh, was what it was. Anyways, I can use that to adjust the uh, voltage anywhere from around 13 volts up to 17 and a half volts. This is my power cable that I plug uh, directly into the battery through the Anderson connector there, and I can charge that battery uh, up to 60 amps with that little power unit. The purpose of this battery is not only to uh, power my 12 volt needs in the uh, RV, but I can also pull this battery pack out and use it around the house in case of a power outage. And uh, the easy way to do that is with this SB175 Anderson power connector here. Putting the battery in or taking it out will be uh, simple with uh, this quick disconnect here. I didn't have the uh, proper equipment to, to do a capacity test on this battery, so what I've done is hooked it up to my Iceco 47 quart uh, freezer cooler and I've been running that thing at max. I've got it set to zero degrees Fahrenheit uh, max energy usage and it's been running for 24 hours so far. Uh, it's been pulling uh, average 1.7 amps per hour. It's used 41 amps in the last 24 hours. Uh, so. I'm going to just leave that hooked up and, and see how many amps I can pull out of that uh, my battery pack. The uh, BMS uh, that's attached to it uh, gives me a readout and tells me exactly how many amp hours I've used from it. So far I'm uh, very happy with it and it's been uh, uh, enjoyable uh, building this thing and I'm looking forward to uh, putting it to many, many years of use. When it's all said and done, I'll probably have $600 uh, into this battery. But uh, at 280 amp hour capacity, uh, that's a pretty good value. Uh, when you figure a Battleborn battery is 105 amp hours, and they cost $950. So if you multiply that times about 2.8, um, it would cost me uh, close to over $2,500 if I had the, for the same capability in a Battleborn battery. I would like to thank a gentleman on YouTube who goes by the name of Hotwire589. He was the gentleman that gave me uh, the instructions on how to take that Hewitt Packard power supply and adapt it uh, for my needs. Uh, I really appreciate uh, his work that he put in that. Uh, uh, if you're interested in doing the same, you can look him up on YouTube and uh, follow his instructions.